Welcome back to Economics with Mr. Altieri. Uh, this should be the second video that you're watching in the class, and uh, it's the first video uh, during which we're going to uh, discuss the material from the textbook. So, <clears throat> in this section, we're going to discuss Chapter 1, Section 1, uh, titled Definitions and Questions. Um, seems to be a quick issue here, and there we go. For some reason, it wants me to do that. Uh, start off with a little bit of a um, a cartoon. Uh, this cartoon, you can read it, uh, gives you the idea that there is um, there's this statistic that we call unemployment, and unemployment is um, is something that a lot of people use to measure a lot of different things uh, with respect to the economy, particularly the health of the economy and and where we're going. Uh, we always like to see, uh, or at least in the in the past five or six years we've wanted to see the unemployment rate go down and that means more people are employed well that's great but if you look at this cartoon what you see is this guy is not out there going to get his dream job he's not out there going to get even a job he really wants he just wants a job he doesn't care what it is and so <clears throat> one of the things that this cartoon shows you is the difference between something like unemployed and underemployed and while the statistics will tell you how many people don't have jobs who are actively seeking jobs uh, they will not tell you those uh, that large number of people who are employed at a rate or a position far lower or um, or less uh, satisfactory to them than they would like uh, give you an idea of the differences in economics and and the fact that this is while it is a science it's a social science and so there aren't always right answers now the definitions and questions are the most basic principles of economics without understanding these things you're never going to be able to understand the science the social science and and so Chapter 1-1 one, one is going to be something that you always want to make sure you remember and you revisit when you need to uh, the first <clears throat> thing we're going to talk about is this concept of scarcity. The concept of scarcity is uh, the single most important concept in economics. It is what drives the study of economics. Uh, scarcity is the condition that arises because wants exceed the ability, ability of the resources to satisfy them. Now, basically, what does that mean? You can't always get what you want. Nothing is unlimited. Not water, not air, nothing. There's not a single thing out there that we can have as much of as we want. We will always want more as a society than exists because nothing is unlimited. Now, the most precious and disregarded scarce resource is time. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we neglect to consider the amount of time spent on an activity. We neglect to consider the amount of time um, foregone in order to partake in in a different activity uh, there are a lot of things that we do that we just don't consider the amount of time it takes to complete them and that time is a resource it's believe it or not the one resource we can't get back you can spend money and re-earn money you can uh, cough up an asset and regain that asset time is the one thing you will never ever be able to get back <clears throat> now economics itself is then the study or the social science that studies the choices that individuals businesses that's microeconomics governments and entire societies macroeconomics make as they cope with scarcity the incentives that influence those choices and the arrangements that coordinate them so what does that mean basically it's the study of the choices we make whether the we is individuals, whether the we is businesses, families, governments, societies. It's the choices we make as we face scarcity. It's what things people can dangle in front of us as either um, things that will make us make a decision or make us not make a decision. And uh, what sort of arrangements uh, exist or markets in order for those decisions to be made. Now, the important thing about that definition is that no one definition of it is absolute. So if you take a look at uh, about 75 different economics textbooks, the chances are you're going to get somewhere between 50 and 75 different definitions of economics. There is no one absolute definition. Um, and that's in part because of the dynamics of economics. It is a social science. It's a study of choices. 
but more importantly it's a study of choices not just money most of us think of economics as money as maybe even if you thought about it as choices you thought about it as the the choices we make with our money it's not just the choices we make with our money it's the choices we make in general and remember back to that one resource that you can't get back is time what makes up economics though what are some of these scarce resources well we have both goods and services okay very simply put goods are the objects people value and produce and services are the services people value and produce okay now what the heck does that mean what does that tell us it tells us and it helps us to answer the three major questions the three major questions that make up economics and they are <clears throat> what how and for whom first we'll deal with the what question what goods and services are produced and in what quantity okay very simply if you took a look at some headlines say this one with more research we will cure cancer the what that's being dealt with here is a cure for cancer what is going to be produced a cure for cancer will be produced how with more research right we'll get to that more research part in a second but here the what is a cure for cancer now take a look at this one for a second I'll give you a minute to to decide uh, if it's not clear enough in red for you that a good education is the what that's being produced a good education is being produced and it is the right of every child okay now how how do the firms choose to produce the goods and services that they produce okay now um, take a look at a couple more headlines again back to with more research we will cure cancer I hinted at this before more research is the how the what is a cure for cancer how will we achieve a cure for how will we achieve a cure for cancer with more research buying more planes will allow US Airways to add international flights now the what is international flights but the how here is buying more planes by purchasing more planes US Airways will be able to add international flights and finally for whom for whom the goods and services are produced now this is going to be the most tricky of all of them for some reason this one always throws people off a good education is the right of every child right and this one's pretty simple right a good education is the right of who it's the right of every child right the, the product the good is a good education or in this case service likely right a good education is the right of every child this next one's a little bit more tricky and this is why the for whom becomes confusing the government must cut its budget deficit by raising taxes now raising taxes is not a for whom right but the concept is who receives the goods and services that are taxed that cause those taxes and it's everyone right so everyone is the for whom all citizens all tax paying citizens are the for whom okay and there's a budget deficit here and that probably tells us about a little bit about the what but we don't really know the one thing we do know here is that what's being produced are goods and services that have caused the deficit and therefore we must raise taxes on everyone who are those goods and services produced for everyone obviously there's a little bit more specifics to this um, and not everyone receives every good and service that a government provides but the the point is is pretty clear now uh, how do these decisions get made that's the that's the the hard part right we can figure out what a headline means you know what question is a headline dealing with well here that's you know with more research will cure cancer what a cure for cancer how more research right that's pretty easy right but how do we make these decisions how do firms how do individuals how do families how do countries how do societies make these decisions they either make them in the self-interest which very simply is the choices that are best for the individual who makes them 
Okay, a choice made in the self-interest is made uh, is made in the best interest of the individual who makes it, the individual, the firm, the country, the society. Okay, and a choice that's made in the social interest is a choice that's best for society as a whole. Now. Obviously, an entire society then making a self-interested choice would be making a social-interested choice. That one's pretty simple. But then that begs the question, is there ever a decision that's made in the self-interest that's also in the social interest? And that brings up uh, a whole lot of uh, philosophy and some, some discussion that, that can bring us all the way back to ancient Greece. Um, and that's where economics will be fun over the course of this period. We're not just dealing with the here and now. We're not just dealing with business. We're dealing with life choices. How do we make the decisions that we make on, an, on a daily basis? Do you make your decisions solely in the self-interest? Do you make them solely in the social interest? Do you make some sort of hybrid set of choices? Or do you believe, do you subscribe to some sort of uh, theory that says that a decision made in your self-interest in a democratic society will always lead to the social interest being met? very interesting uh, way to look at this and uh, a good spot to end. So tomorrow we'll pick up uh, talking about section 1.2, the economic way of thinking. Um, but remember all the way back to uh, the beginning that this is a set of choices. Economics is the study of the choices we make. Not just choices about money, but choices about everything. Okay, and how do what drives us to make those choices? Sometimes the self-interest, sometimes the social interest, and we're going to have to take a look throughout the course of this year to figure out what what decisions are made in the self-interest and what are made in the social interest, and what the consequences of such decisions are.